then start to swing up, and then it would start to swing down before it hit that little knuckle turn. Oh. And it would hit that and it would come off on two wheels. <laughs> Ooh. It's like taking a mogul the wrong and this way. And this one was doing it too. So that's that's when the study, you know, got like, okay, why is this happening? You got into the reason why. So the whole top section, uh, when you come out of the first turn, I redesigned that. There's a bunch of different shapes to get you through that. And what it does, it kind of gets you through uh, and the car calms down. But then when you hit turn three, and we number the curves from lift to end. When you hit turn three, you really hit it. You really climb that wall. So this ride's actually got way more dynamics and a lot, I think a lot more fun to it. Have you guys been some adjustments to it over the last couple of years, haven't you? You added a little? No, no, no. We've been ever since 2013. We basically, you know, the, the whole key was the vehicles too. The original yeah. vehicles on a flying turn were just a leaf spring with three axles and a caster on each end of the axle, um, a, a seat with a weldment hoop around the back and a nose, and you sat on wood. Now the leaf spring is twisting and bending like this. It was nothing but pinch points, mm. and I, I suspect I don't know if I'm right about this one either. But you ever see the pictures of the Coney Island flying turns where all the, the mm. girl, the girls, it's mostly the girls in the front, they're sitting like this? I think it was because the pinch points were so bad, they were afraid people were going to lose their fingers. Uh -huh. I mean, the cars just, so they improved it. The Coney Island bobsled, which is this car over here, uh, all in Riverside, all of the, the flying turns, they started to improve the car. They took the twist out of it, but it's still bent. So now you have sliding surfaces, and sliding surfaces are either easier to guard you know, they're not opening and closing. You might still get a zinger, but you're not going to lose a finger. So that's the way that car was done. So I actually, when I came on, I tried to pursue that route with a car. And the car is too heavy, and it didn't work very well at all. I also tried dampers to try to make it almost sort of pseudo-steer as you went through the turns. Mm -hmm. And that worked great until we changed the weight. You know, the weight's a big issue on this ride. I don't know if you're aware. You know you're sort of being weighed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 Heaviest front seat to back seat. Right? Makes sense. And, um, you know, when I first came on, they were talking about that. And we had a five car train, one of these. It was, it was very, it wasn't these cars, it was the first generation. And there were even a couple of different varieties along the train of five cars. And I was riding it, and I was feeling good about it. We were riding all day. Yeah, I think this is right when I started. And I was working with Jim Martini, and I go, I think we're going to hop in the back. Mm -hmm. I weighed 250 pounds at the time, I'm a little lighter now. He goes, You sure you want to do it? I'm like, Yeah. I'm going to try that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like being a guinea pig. Came <laughs> out. First car went up, slammed into the, the, oh, the side rail immediately. Oh, I'm wow. like, a humming, a humming, right? It comes <laughs> out and it swings across. It slams into turn two. Then it kind of settled out. And then I hit three. And then I don't even know. I know I hit at least one or two more times on the way down. But I was like, this is how Mike Booth is going to die. <laughs> <laughs> In a, in a pile up of fly turns. <laughs> so that really drove home. You know, we, we are, you know, and you wonder how many parks could do it. You could really control the loading, and the nobles can because they have good staff and they're willing to take their time. And, you know, he built this ride with a capacity of, we were hoping for 300, which we could theoretically get if we really jam people through. But, um, how many trains you run at a time? Or can you run at a time? We can run three. We have four. Uh, Every day there's various maintenance that goes on with them. So the one big problem with this ride, ever since we opened it, uh, and it might have something to do with the change in distance between the turns. I don't have the original one to compare it to. Um, but it barely made it up that last hill. And lubrication and weight, all very important for this ride to run. We have a threshold of speed that we're constantly monitoring. Uh, suddenly closes down on a really hot day, chances are we got an overspeed. We have various things we try to do, yeah, various things we try to try to do, to, and we don't put people on it until we've reached a certain speed either. And it's a time, it's just a time. I don't know what the actual feet per second speed is, but we measure it from, you know, basically when we drop off the lift to, to the set of photo eyes right here crossing. Uh, and that's how we monitor the speed of it. And each individual car is sort of monitored in the helix, so we kind of know what's ahead for that car. We adjust the lift speed as we drop it off. And you've probably seen there's a brake up top too. On the hottest days, you will slide all the way over that brake. And in, in between scenarios, you might get on it and feel it drop out. Because what we do is we measure the speed in the helix. We kind of know what that train is going to be doing. And we operate the brake and we drop it off the lift uh, to accommodate, to bring you home within that envelope of speed. So 
early on in that, the mornings, because lubrication is very important, the mornings grease is stiff and uh, it was not getting up onto this catch. I don't know, did anybody ride it last year? No. Couple years ago, but. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe not, not last year. When we first opened. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so you know it came up and very sweetly came up and just kind of, we caught it and then he got on the brake run. Well, the morning to start up, the guys would have to winch the trains up numerous times. Numerous times. It was dangerous when it's wet. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, on these 24 degree lifts, uh, when the car stops, the casters cock and it will break itself. There's enough friction. Yeah. So that kept the train from backing down the turn if it didn't make it. But on wet days, it would slide all the way down. And the guys are sliding down. So it was really, it was too much. It really, and we did this since 2013. Um, other problem, that was bad enough. We just say, throw the man hours at it, get the ride running in the morning. But then, if it rains, you'll notice we'll take a train off because the speeds do start to drop. Friction of just moving water out of the way is greater than the lubrication benefit of water. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then we take it off and then the sun would come out and for us to bring on the other train, we would have to dig it out. And we couldn't run the ride with people while we had a train that wasn't making it home. Mm -hmm. So, the, oh, I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Um, before I forget, is the heat <laughs> or the sun a bigger factor? Because the sun will bake it. Yeah, the, they both kind of work together. I mean, the sun is a radiant heat, so anything in the sun, you know. You're yeah. out in the sun, you feel it. But I don't know if you noticed, the, the station also has air conditioning for the hottest days and heat. Like, when you go up today, it might be hot. Oh, tonight, it might be hot. You know, we're not... What are we doing around? We're doing a run tonight. It's probably going to be hot uh, just to get help things get around. So, anyway, this struggle with being so marginally finishing with friction... You know, we've been talking for years about what would happen if we just dropped that last turn to the ground and added yet another lift to the uh -huh. flag turns. And uh, they approved it for the 2019 season. We started working on it. Of course, COVID came and things changed, but we just got it open this year. Well, that's, so that's that's why this that's is... That's a little bit of change that you made. I know they were making a, some change. That's the big change. Because okay. you used to come out of C... The, the, like I say, this is C9. C10 was the last one. And you just kind of gently come up and you slow down. And actually, Brian Canoble loved that aspect of the ride. I think it's because he felt like it was a, a plane coming in for a landing. <laughs> well, now it's a rough landing. <laughs> well, but we, we catch it. I mean, the cars have shocks on the side. You'll see it. You'll, you'll one, one thing I was really impressed with when you come into the lifts, or, well, when we rode it the other day, I mean, it was just like a smooth transition. There was no bump. I mean, you know, you ride in some of the new fiberglass ones and you come into the. Oh, the they next catch lift. you. Yeah, yeah. Catch. yeah the, cap the captures are di difficult. I know the Intamin ones with the single cars, they're really. Yeah. Um, this is just like. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you didn't even feel it. At least well, right you, will, you won't really feel this, but you'll hear this. There's shock absorbers that uh, the guide wheels that guide you through the station, through the brake, up the lift, any, any area that we need to basically keep control of the center of the train. Uh, they're on what we call swing arms. Okay. And um, the industry has these wonderful shock absorbers that you can adjust. And the problem is this isn't like most industry applications <laughs> but you know these these shock absorbers that you can literally drop a hundred pounds on and they can decelerate that hundred pounds to a stop oh, okay. within the stroke of the shock absorber wow. they're, they're built by ace and um, so that's actually implemented it's not it's not one it's not 100 percent we're actually leveraging it but that's how this guide wheel when you hit the rail slowly brings you in oh yeah <laughs> i didn't get any food today uh, like i said it didn't even feel like you were yeah this one's a little rougher because we are actually coming out and landing you're still at a little angle when we start to catch you but it's still nothing i think it, it uh we did dynamic uh testing i think it's 0.8 g's down at your butt which well, is way higher lower than you. Now, now now that you've created this and finally getting it close to Perfection, you think anybody else is going to build one? A lot of people want it. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been, even my old business partner, Claire. Even my old business partner, Claire, has been approached about building it. I'm not going to help. It, it's, it was so, I mean, the whole ride was basically empirically designed. You know, and that costs a lot of money. Yeah. You know, you, not that you can't figure some things out, but the ride, there are, um, got, um, the casters have springs that center them. 
So when you pull it out, it wants to come back. And you can see them on, I can't really drink this right now, but you can see them on the car. And uh, this is like an uh, item that costs, depending on how many you buy, less than two bucks. Take them off and you will be banging into the walls all the way down this way. <laughs> so because of stuff like that, everything on the ride is redundant. All the bearings are redundant. We can have any bearing anywhere completely seize up and there's another system that allows that mechanism to continue to pivot or roll or whatever. Actually, the wheels don't have redundancy because if a wheel bearing seizes up, you will skid. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else mechanically is fully redundant. So what I mean by that is if any one of those parts seizes up or fails, the system will still be able to perform and do what it has to do. And the springs are, are redundant as well, <laughs> obviously. you know. So. Uh, that's basically the, sort of the history of the ride, where it got to where it was, and you know why this change you see now. You ask if other people want it. The main reason why I would say no is I honestly don't know the big corporate parks with the way they manage maintenance. And you know, it, I worked for Great Adventure when I was a kid, and I I had my ride, but they could go over there and run that ride for a day. You know, and I would be. Possible. I don't know if they still do that, but I mean, you know, there's different levels. Where this yeah. ride has a very specific team that knows this ride, takes care of it, inspects it every morning, and uh, brings it up to speed and opens it to the public. Oh, if, you'd have, if you had to replace any of little oh. couple pieces of wood, oh, yeah. is it easy oh, enough to get in and out, or do you yeah. have to tear out the whole thing? Oh, no. no. It's all, well, it's all tongue and groove, so anybody that works with tongue and groove knows that there's a start and a stop. But we don't, we don't take it out to the end. Like, you'll see screws on some of the outer tabs, you know. Um, we, the ride originally, by the way, I start to tell you, the original rides were, the, were rotted out at Forest Park Islands and were punched through. That was one ply. So this ride, and this was a great thing. I wasn't involved with it, but they decided we're going to make this track just like everything, <coughs> redundant. So the first, the first uh, longitudinal, or in line with travel, they get laid down first, and on top of that, there are like, think of those like barrel stays. Mm -hmm. yeah. They all have to be wet to be bent in. They're half inch thick, so a lot of work. And they're already like, you know, this wide. They're wider in the straights, but in the curves. Right? And they're all paper cut. They are, everything is screwed with stainless screws. And then on top of it, they built the original one with cypress, or yeah, cypress, just like the original rides. Kenobles did the same thing. Guess what? Cypress rots out. Uh, so we ran it that way while we were developing it, and we just started to see that Cypress really started to deteriorate. Part of it was because it was now on a bed of wood, which held water too. Um, so we made the decision, let's see if we can't get the treated lumber, you know, milled down to tongue and groove. So that's a special job. You know? So all of the top surface is now uh, KDAT treated southern pine and uh we don't have rot problems we still still get problems from sun baking it and you know that's why a lot of this stuff gets work but you get an idea when you come home you might not even notice it when you're on it but that's what the whole ride looked like when it was new it was just beautiful and as time goes by we have areas where we have to have to do work in fact some of the oldest parks like euclid beach and Coney Island, they actually painted uh with lead paint they painted a strip <laughs> over the wear area to try to keep it from getting down to the wood and try to get it to where it would. Can't do that anymore. No. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or? Mm -hmm. I can give you a background good enough to yeah. take home and tell your friends. Excellent. Oh, it's excellent. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I got a question. Yes, sir. To redo the end, were you able to save it? If you had to drop the end down, were you able to save chunks of it or? In theory, this turn, uh, did not change, but because of the way the, the trough is built, we pulled it back to, to about here. But okay, so the ride used to—it's a—it's a—it it has varying slopes to it. The turns drop faster than the straights. Uh, but in this area, the lowest point—you're going to cut right across the drain. It's like right there. It's the lowest point of the trough. Um, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> how old does that? And how long? How old does that? And yeah. how many tries did they try before they got it right? Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Patience to virtue. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I was able to take on the line drawing from that lowest point. I actually had to put in a very graceful hump. 
And then it's all about a one degree pitch to... And then how old is it? It was opened in 2013, so what do you think? Eight years old. Yeah. Is eight years old. Yeah. I thought this was, was seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not. Well, I, I thought it was made before that. It's, it's made from an old ride. It was a copy of an old ride. That's pretty cool. Get approval to build it without formal design. Yeah, that was what was back. interesting. This, the park worked with the state. They knew what they were going and doing. And the state was like, you know, well, there's certain things the state requires. The music. That's part of the reason why the car is more... Uh, you know, it's one piece, like the original ride, that car was constantly bending and twisting, like I said. They actually started that way, and I'm surprised no one at the state shut them down. But when I came on, I was like, this isn't, this isn't going to fly. You know, there's no way. Do you get the ride all three trains? Oh, yeah. Do you think other states would be more strict? I, no, I don't necessarily think so. Most states have standards for rides, since this is a standalone. It's, if you look at ASTM standards, it's judged by dynamic forces, uh, restraint. Now this, because if there are no negative Gs on it, you don't need a, a grade 5 restraint. I would love to run it with none, but then you have problems with people messing around. And at least the seatbelt puts some onus on the rider, and the state still recognizes that. You know, um, I hope they never require a hard mount uh, uh, restraint on that. But yeah, we did. We showed that there, there are no real forces. In fact, the biggest concern they had, uh, why they still required some kind of forward resistance, was you know, if trains bump. Now we never bump, but that does happen on rides. Usually on rides with fin brakes, because they're so much more abrupt and they have so much more stopping power. We have sled brakes, so everything's gentle, if you will. You know. Um, but yeah, the state's been really great. I mean, they have their requirements, but they, you know, they saw all the work and the time. And nothing was rushed, by the way. This ride, uh, like yesterday, just before you guys showed up in the morning or night, no, it was morning. Morning, yep. Yesterday, yeah, morning. It was morning. There was guys, a, before you leave, can everybody get into a group shot? Please? There was a okay. sensor, literally went bad five minutes before you guys. Oh. And uh, because they know the ride, the, the electricians came over, they were able to trace it out. And um, they found dog? exactly where it was and replaced it and we were open. <laughs> so. so I have a quick question. So you used to work for CGI or, or Great Coasters? or Great Coasters. I actually started Great Coasters with Claire Hay. Did you go to, to, you rode three of my rides this trip. I did Dutch Wonderland for CCI. Okay. And then I started Great Coasters and we did Wildcat and Lightning Racer at Hershey Park. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. That's quite a resume. What's your favorite? I, whichever one I'm riding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Politically correct, right? Yeah. <laughs> did you work in the Wildcat Branson? Yes, I did the Wildcat Branson. They tore it down. Yes, I know. That, if you had to say a favorite, now that one's going, I can say that one was probably. Because you know what? It was only 80 feet tall. And it really had a, a to me, it had a lot of fun. I don't know you're going to be here What's that? Do you? Nice. Yeah, I was disappointed when the park didn't make it. It was a big risk, you know. Well, they talked about it, but Rocky Mountain was starting these more aggressive rides. And, um, because I was like, there was so much topography. I mean, you can't, it's not good to add a lot of structure, but we're in Silver Dollar City. I really felt they could find a place where they could remove structure and just drop it in. You know what I mean? Like, shorter structure but they weren't they started talking about it but it got it got cut short. you guys can all just go it was awful it wasn't even worth it you just don't even waste your time well that's my protege that's jeff i taught him i hired him and i taught him i might have missed it but so the the first smaller drop was that is that was the purpose of that to basically be able to get a good feel on speed before sending it up into the main no. chute? No. You mean the spiral? That, I'll tell you what, it's yeah, yeah. So okay, so because of the lot, uh, they had to change. Basically, the Coney ride just got you to this point here, the lift. Mm -hmm. But because of the lot where they had to put the station, they had to add a way to get you up over here. Yeah. So originally, the spiral was going to be completely enclosed uh, and turned into kind of like a dark thing. Yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, just getting right open became the biggest challenge. Yeah. And it's still fun. It, I think the spiral, um, it gives you a feel of exactly what yeah. you're in. You sense that, hey, there's nothing really 
but physics taking us down mm -hmm. this track. Yeah. You get slow, and then you, and you bank, and it's all stretched out in the spiral, and then it gets hectic up here. Yeah. So the ride builds an intensity, which is what I like. By the way, I know you got to go up, but one more quick thing. You're all roller coaster lovers. Yeah. What got me hooked on this ride is the dynamic change and the rapid succession of them. Mm -hmm. When you're in the turn, you are literally feeling vertical Gs of 2.8, 2.86, sometimes 3 down in C7 and when you come out of that turn there's no smooth transitions you come right out of an arc into mm -hmm. a straight so when you come out all that goes away and you're almost at zero as you fall down yeah. swing through 1G then you get almost up to zero then bang you feel it again and probably the best two turns to feel it are on four if you count the turns mm -hmm. when you go up and four the car literally does exactly what I would like it. I'd like it to do it every turn it goes up boom, it just hangs on that turn and you fall right out so you're you're going through these rapid dynamic changes which is yeah. something you won't experience on most rail drives yeah so. it's hard to pull two and then go to mm -hmm. immediately right one more when we wrote it years ago only, maybe a year or so after it actually opened it, it didn't seem as fast it seems faster now is that it depends on what day honestly yeah. I, like i say the, th the threshold of safety to run it has always been the well, same I understand that. so you might have been on a slower day uh have you ever on one where you're feeling the break at the top? You're on a fast day. You know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I gotta let you guys go. So 15, okay? Thank you.